Hey everybody, what's up? Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today in Behind the Animation, instead of dissecting a micro animation used in an ad or web app, we're actually gonna go behind the technology used in a web ad, all right? Uh, this is really cool. What happened is Adobe and Google teamed up to create a tool to help you build animations for AMP HTML ads, all right? Maybe saying, what the heck is that? Well, I'm gonna explain it. But basically, this ad you're seeing over here was built using Animate CC and behind the scenes, web animation API animations are used to move all the stuff around, all right? So if you're a web developer who's at all into CSS animations, JavaScript animations, or WAPI, I think you're gonna find this stuff really cool, all right? So before I dig into Animate CC, I'm just gonna give you a really quick 30 second rundown on AMP HTML pages and AMP HTML ads, all right? What a mouthful, let's go. First of all, AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Page. AMP pages are designed to load fast and not kill the battery of your mobile phone. And what I'm gonna do is recommend you check out amp.dev for full explanation of everything. But I'm just gonna give you a very top level rundown, all right? How do you know when you're on an AMP page? Well, on your mobile device, you might go to a Google search result that you think is coming from the New York Times, but your address bar is going to tell you that it's coming from Google, all right? Uh, most AMP pages are going to be cached by Google and even load behind the scenes before you even click on a link, all right? Um, it can be frustrating to be seeing content from the New York Times, but see the address bar as Google. Well, down here they tell you that the actual source is the New York Times, and more recently, there is a button here where you can get the actual link, which is definitely helpful. But moving on, I want to point out that the AMP HTML specification tells you that AMP HTML is a subset of HTML. So just translate that as a limited selection of HTML tags. And if we scroll on down even further, we're going to find out that it does not allow author written JavaScript beyond what is provided through the custom elements to reach its performance goals, all right? So you can't write your own JavaScript. There's also information here on AMP HTML ads, which again says that ads no longer have the ability to run arbitrary JavaScript. And lastly, the only properties that may be transitioned are opacity and transform. So that means things like X and Y position, scale, rotation, and skew. This page tells you if you want to change the color of something, that's not allowed. So we're left with quite a few AMP HTML limitations. There's limited use of HTML tags, no author written JavaScript, and limited properties that can be animated. So I'm left with one big question. How is Animate CC generating animations with all these limitations, all right? I know for sure that it can't use its existing HTML canvas export capabilities because they rely on CreateJS, TweenJS, and a whole bunch of JavaScript in the HTML5 canvas. My big question is, so, is it going to generate a bunch of HTML with divs and stuff? That's what I'm here to find out. Let's go take a look at Animate and see what's going on. All right, so over here in Animate, I have my iPhone FLA opened up and you'll see that it's a custom file type. And I'll show you how to start one of these towards the end of the video, but I wanna get into the good stuff. And here, I just wanna show you that we have a very typical Flash timeline that has a bunch of classic tweens, all right? If you've used Flash or Animate any time in the last 20 years, uh, it's all pretty much the same setup, all right? Building an AMP HTML ad is no different than doing anything else. Uh, the first thing that happens here is the background gradient sort of fades in, looks all nice. The phone slides in, and then we're just staggering in some of this text here, all right? So nothing too crazy. What I'm going to do though is do a control test movie in browser and let's see what we get. Let me just close this tab of my old version. You'll notice that we have this animation playing buttery smooth. It looks really nice, all right? It's playing quickly. Uh, I'm gonna say we're getting probably you know, 60 frames per second as we should with this type of animation. And I'm really curious to see what's happening behind the scenes, all right? Let's go behind the animation. So let's open up our dev tools and let's explore the elements, okay? So here we have our body, uh, we have an AMP analytics tag, we have this div right here called SVG wrapper, all right? And this is gonna have some stuff in there. Inside of there, we have two SVG nodes, and the first one contains this defs element, all right? Which defines a bunch of gradients and some other stuff, all right? 
And then we have our main SVG, which is going to use those definitions. And you'll see that we have these use elements here, okay? So all these things basically reference something inside the defs SVG. And we have things like IDs that are L0, L4, L5, L6, L7, all right? All kind of cryptic, nothing really relates to any of the naming of my layers in my animate file. But if we poke into this one here, we'll see that we have a vector effect. What do we have? A group. And then we just have some typical SVG path stuff, all right? I don't even know what that actually is. It's probably one of the pieces of broken apart text. So let's close that. And I want to show you what's inside of L7 here. Maybe it's layer 7. I don't know. But let's open it up. And you're going to see here that we have inside this G element the image ID, all right? So what's happening is it's loading in an external image, all right? There's my iPhone. So it's putting a bitmap inside the SVG along with all the other vector goodness stuff, okay? So moving on down the DOM, what I want to do is also point out that we have this thing here called an AMP animation tag, all right? Hmm, that's intriguing. Maybe that will tell us how things are moving around. So. Let me just crack that guy open and we'll go into this script right here and this is where all the magic happens, all right? We have all these keyframe definitions in sort of a JSON format and we can go down, we see keyframes, colon, and then we have basically an array of all these keyframe objects, all right? So this is really the meat of where all the animation information is being conveyed, all right? So I want to find out a little bit more about this AMP HTML thing. So let me go to Google. All right, so in the amp.dev documentation, we have AMP animation, blah, blah, blah. And it says AMP animations rely on Web Animations API to define and run animations in AMP documents. All right, so what we can do is scroll down here, and I'm not going to get into it too much but it shows you all the different ways that you can format your animation instructions basically in this keyframe format. So it shows you all the sort of uh, allowed keywords and gives you definitions for easing, direction, iteration, start, all that sort of stuff, all right? So here we have keyframes, blah, blah, blah. So basically what Animate is doing is taking all the different settings that we have on our timeline and it's exporting this, you know, sort of monster list of keyframes that then get interpreted and somehow end up as web animations API driven animations. Let me jump back into my web page. And here I'm just going to collapse the body tag. And let's go over to where do we have it? More tools, animations, all right? Since this is a web animations API animation, uh, we should be able to control it here, all right? It's not currently finding it, but I think a little uh, refresh. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see what happens. There we go. We click on this thing and get this big rollover. Let me just actually click on it. Aha, this is what I wanted to show you, all right? So here we have a timeline representation of the animation opened in DevTools, okay? So I can scrub through this in real time and see how everything works, all right? So the first thing to come in is this thing with a use ID of 05, okay? And that's the background that contains that nice gradient that fades in. And then here, we're gonna have the phone come in. We have a little bit of a graph here showing you the easing that's being used. And it gets to that point, it goes back, and then boom, all of the text comes in in these three lines here. And lastly, we have, boom, this uh, button coming in. So we can play around with some stuff here. I'm not terribly familiar with these animation controls, but we can go play it at 25% speed and let us just play it. And actually, let's start at the beginning. So we can watch it really slow. But it's slow, but it's still nice and smooth. Inside of these uh, tools here, you know, I can do stuff like take this whole span of frames and have them happen later. So if for some stupid reason I want to have the phone come in after the text, I can do that here. All right. So it's just pretty cool that, you know, I can scrub through and see all that stuff in DevTools. All right. Always a good way to. Uh, 
Again, go behind the animation to figure out what's happening, go into DevTools and poke around. Uh, before I get out of my little exploration, let's actually check out what it is that Animate exported for me. So here I have this uh, iPhone add folder. This is the FLA file I'm working in. It created this HTML page for me, and it also exported a folder called images and put my fancy iPhone in there that's capable of uh, 5G speeds and two terabytes of storage. And what I wanna show you, it's kinda of cool, is that it's 195K, I didn't optimize it at all, and the original phone is really quite big, so uh, Animate didn't do anything to size it down to the size that I had it on the stage, so uh, you probably wanna use your assets at actual size, or maybe 2X them if you're doing stuff for Retina, all right? And while we're talking about all the files that we'll need, I just wanna to go to the Network tab in DevTools, we'll, uh, refresh our page and it's important to note that we're of course loading the uh, HTML page uh, but there are these two JS files here amp for ads v0 and we have amp animation 01.js and we have analytics here okay all of this stuff is coming off of a CDN for the AMP project, all right? You can see those little uh, URLs when I hover. So none of these three JavaScript file include any code really specific to your animation or your ad. It's all basically uh, AMP ad runtime stuff that gets pulled in from a CDN. So you're going to be using absolutely none of your own JavaScript when you're creating these ads, okay? It's all coming off a CDN for you and it's most likely going to be super cached by Google or whoever's serving your ad. Oh, hey, quick interruption, all right? Just a word from our sponsors. <gasps> Oh, there are none, all right? So listen, I know you made it this far in the video. I'm guessing that you kind of like what you're seeing, okay? And that means a lot to me. Uh, I would really appreciate, though, if you do me a small little favor. You know, if you like this stuff, tell your friends, all right? Please share it. I want to keep this behind the animation series going, and I kind of need your help to do it, all right? So please, share on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you go. Uh, the best thing you can do right now is to like this video, leave me a comment on YouTube, and uh, subscribe to notifications so you know when the next one's coming out, all right? So... That's it. Thanks for watching. I got a lot more to tell you about AMP HTML ads. Let's go. So next, let me just go over the basic setup of uh, creating one of these ads, all right? Uh, it's not gonna be a full tutorial, but you should know that if you go to File, New in Animate, you're going to have the uh, new document start screen come up, and you will go to Advanced here, and then you have Custom Platforms, AMP HTML ad. Now. If you do not have the AMP HTML ad plugin or extension, you'll get a little warning here that says you need to install the extension. You click a button and it takes you to a web page. That web page is going to look like this. All right, and it tells you this is the AMP HTML ad extension. There'll be a little button to click to install it. It all happens pretty seamlessly through Creative Cloud. And you just have some very basic information about what is supported here, the product info. Uh, under Notes and Docs, there is a link to this documentation, which is actually a very helpful PDF file. It looks like this. It tells you important things like the document type ensures that the creation process conforms to the specific high performance requirements of AMP HTML ads, and that it will make a full standards compliant AMP HTML document ready to use. If you scroll down, it's gonna go into some more stuff. I found this interesting, that one of the main benefits is preventing unpleasant ad experiences and reducing user hostility. So if you're hostile towards your ads, hopefully these will help. Um, blah, 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 installation guide. So again, I'm not doing a full tutorial here because this documentation is really quite clear and explains it all. And it also tells you about something called the AMP preview, okay? So this is a special panel that allows you to actually test your ad inside Animate. Oh, wouldn't it be good if this video showed you how to do that? Yeah, let's do that. So let me jump back into Animate. I'm going to go to Window, Extensions, AMP HTML ad preview. And so instead of testing in the browser, I can do a refresh here. And what do I get? Aha, there we go. There's my ad playing in a new window in Animate and I didn't have to launch an external browser. Note to the Animate team, I would love to see this for the HTML5 Canvas output as well. That would be swell. 
And while we're speaking of published settings, I want to point out something very interesting to me, and that's how the frames per second is being handled with these AMP HTML ads, all right? So currently, I have this other demo I just switched over to uh, set up where a phone moves from left to right across the stage, and you'll notice that the frame rate is 30 frames per second, all right? This animation is 30 frames long, so it's gonna take one second to display all 30 frames. Now, typically with Flash and Animate, the frame rate kind of told you also how many times the screen would be refreshed per second. But I'm going to just test this file out real quick and show you that we have a very smooth animation here. All right, it's one second long and there are 30 frames that are being you know, displayed in my Animate timeline but the screen is actually being updated at 60 frames per second, which is the way web animations, CSS animations, and JavaScript animations are designed to run in the modern browser, okay? And to prove that to you, I'm gonna to go to the timeline, and here again, we have 30 frames, and they take one second. I'm gonna switch the frame rate down to five frames per second, and now we still have 30 frames in the timeline, but it's just gonna take six seconds to get there, all right? Because it's gonna take one second to play the first five frames and then two seconds to play the first 10 frames and so on and so on. But if I test this file out, check it out, it plays very slowly. It is taking six seconds to move from left to right, but the screen is being refreshed 60 times per second. So although it's slow, it's still a smooth animation, all right? And as Flash or Animate developers, we're really not used to that, okay? Uh, in typical Flash and Animate fashion, the frame rate would dictate how many times the screen would render per second. So let me just go over to this demo over here where I have an HTML5 Canvas document set up and I have the same exact animation here at five frames per second. It's still 30 frames, six seconds long, but typically the frame rate of five frames per second is gonna give us something like this, where it only renders five times per second, so you get this very herky-jerky animation. There's this jumping, all right? It's not updating 60 times per second, so it doesn't have all these frames to show, and you get this herky-jerkiness, all right? So, I really wish that the HTML5 Canvas output actually followed this same model, all right? I think it's great that the AMP ads are acknowledging, hey, browsers play at 60 frames per second, or they, they render that quickly. So, uh, regardless of what the frame rate is on the timeline, um, yes, it may take one second to get to five frames, but we're gonna update 60 times before we get to frame five, okay? So that gives us a lot more animation fidelity, if you will, all right? It's five frames per second as far as the timing goes, but the updates are happening at 60 frames per second. So um, if that puts your head in a blender, I'm sorry, but it's the way it is, uh, and maybe I can explain it better someday. But for now, that's all I got. All right, folks, I gotta wrap this up. So just a quick statement. Despite the limitations imposed by the AMP HTML ad specs and the web animations API, I'm definitely left impressed by Animate CC's ease of use and the quality of the output. You can't deny that that animation was running super smooth and it really took me just a few minutes to build. Now, I know there is some concern about AMP HTML pages and uh, I'm gonna give you some resources below to check that out, but I gotta say, if you need to build AMP HTML ads, I would strongly recommend using Animate CC, all right? It's gonna be 100 times easier than hand coding this stuff with the Web Animations API. And by using Animate CC and this plugin, you're absolutely guaranteed that what you're doing is gonna to conform to the specs, all right? So I know it kind of stinks. You're used to a lot of different features of Animate CC and you're not gonna be able to use them in AMP ads, but for what you gotta do, it does a good job. Now, I would love to talk more about this stuff, get deeper into Animate CC, but uh, I want to know if you're interested in this topic, all right? If you want to learn more about AMP HTML ads, let me know, and I'll uh, do another video. But for now, let me let you go, and as I close, remember, leave some comments below, share this stuff if you like it, let me know, and we'll do some more. Have an awesome day. Normal